everybody, welcome back to Stream Man Guitars, where we have an Xavier from GFS, or Guitar Fetish, a Les Paul shaped object. It's actually very nice. Um, for the price they're asking for these things, the fretwork is, uh, they're, they're smooth, but they're hanging over the fingerboard a little bit. The frets are a little bit not polished. Um, he's got some buzz on this, but I just checked the relief, and the re relief is like around nine, nine or ten thou. Needs to be at twelve at the uh, eighth fret. Um, Spec-wise, it's essentially what you'd expect from. Gibson 24 and 3 quarters um, brass saddles in the bridge kind of an upgrade Let's see push pull pots wow that one's hard to get up for coil splitting um, I read on their um, on their web page that these tuners kind of generic there's no name on them uh, are 14 to 1 which I noticed whenever I was tuning it up I'm like hmm that's a little too small of a movement to get to where I want to be so right now that's really all I would do to repl uh, that's all I would replace on these things um, these um, have the GF GFS a uh, quick plug system so you could swap out your pickups with other GFS pickups which are actually really good um, so yeah we're gonna take the truss rod cover off and we're going to give this some relief so let's see what we have here Ooh, is that a four or five I'm going to guess that we are four, but I'll grab the five just in case. Okay, so we released the uh, tension on the neck a little bit, and we got our um, relief at 12 thousandths. Now string height should be 564 at the 12th and 364 at the 12th on the uh, high E. Right now we're 464 and 464. So we're going to raise that up just a little bit, and that means putting tension on the strings. So we're going to release that a little bit and go ahead and raise the string height. One thing you want to be sure is that you get the right size screwdriver for the job, and then use a, a rag. Okay, that's what we want. Put a rag over the screw. Get our screw driving tool. Find the slot. And raise the bridge without damaging the hardware. We're at five, we're at four, so we're gonna drop that side down a little bit. Can you do it? No, you can't do it. I'm gonna use the screwdriver. If that dips. We're good there. Let's tune it back up. I'll be right back. All right, so um, I did a few tricks on it with the existing strings. Um, brought up the action to 564 on the bass side, and it didn't like 364 on the treble side, so I went to 464, and it still doesn't like that on the treble side. The frets 
are not, like I said earlier, they're not polished at all. Looks like the only polishing that has happened is from him playing just a little bit. You can see some wear marks like right in here. But, and when I say wear marks, that's just from bending right there, but you could still feel and hear probably. Shouldn't be hearing that scratching noise. Okay, we did some adjusting here to get it within the uh, speck of where it should be and uh, it's uh, still giving me fret buzz in between say the uh, 14th and 6th fret Actually, it's not that bad. So I'm going to do a... I have to polish the frets anyhow. So I'm going to do a very light level and crown. Just to make sure everything's straight. We want to have the neck supported exactly right. And this will allow us to do that. Okay, so that way when I'm doing the uh, leveling, it's not being, you know, held up with this thing. So, take the strings off, and we'll be back. So, we got our neck in a, in a straight position, and we're taping it up. And I'm noticing that there are a bunch of repair spots here, here, um, here, 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 where they drop filled probably uh, whatever the material is here. Um, website says um, uh, dark walnut. Uh, another source says rosewood, but whatever it is, there's drop fill spots all over here. Also we got the fifth fret, the two, uh, the tenth fret, the fourteenth fret, and the eighteenth fret that are high. And that's why I couldn't get the buzzing out of it whenever I did the uh, preliminary setup. So um, I'm taping up the fingerboard here so that I can get in and do the level and crown. I don't think it's going to take much. A couple passes with some 220 and that'll get us to where we want to be. And uh, just going to finish taping this up. See I got all this taped up here because I don't want to get any nickel filings in the electronics. I'll probably put a little bit around the knob here. And uh, I'll check with you on the other side of the taping. Okay, everything is taped up, and remember that our 5th, 10th, 14th, and 18th fret are high. I got the magenta um, sharpie on here. Neck is straight. We got some 220 on the leveling beam. And ah, I do want to put some tape over this nut because there ain't no fun like a busted nut. Pun intended. I think I'm going to end up replacing it. I just can't seem to find the right spacing and stuff on the Tusk website. So anyhow, the idea with this is you let the bar do the work and you take it back and forth a few times.
Okay, so what we're seeing here is high spots, low spots, normal spot, normal spot, one, two, three, four, five, a lot coming off of this one here, not much coming off that, not much coming off of that, so that was definitely high. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, these haven't been touched much, but this is getting quite a bit of touch. Um, this one's getting quite a bit, and this one's getting quite a bit. And so far, these haven't been touched at all. A little bit here. So, you see what I mean about having to clean the sandpaper off. So you take your paintbrush that you don't use for anything else but that. And you clean your sandpaper off. Okay, so I see what they did here. They cheated the last, uh, last few frets here. Um, so that's not a big deal. They cheated them, they faded them is what it's called. And, uh, but there was still some unevenness on the last couple of frets. So we brought out a little uh, 12 inch radius. So now we're gonna take the fret dagger like that'll do it. So I'm going to mark all these again with the uh, the magenta pink and uh, we're going to crown them all and take the tape off and polish everything. Okay all the frets have been leveled and rechecked with the fret rocker. We had a couple of issues up here and uh, now it's on to the micro mesh. Polishing with micro mesh, starting with 1500. And that's going to make short work of this. <clears throat> and we'll go all the way up to 4000. Okay, all the tapes off. I still have to clean the fingerboard. You see there's lines from the tape glue. Um, you can see more readily all those repairs that they did at the factory. Um, but we're going to clean it and oil it. Now all the frets are super polished. Super gloss. And uh, i got to go to a softball game and we'll come back and make the thing play great. Okay boys and girls we popped the uh, original plastic nut out. Which I have in my pocket here and it really is a piece of crap. So I've got uh, GraphTech PLQ6060 that's the extra lubricated GraphTech nut which is if you go online looking for an Epiphone Les Paul um, replacement nut this is what it is it matches up with the original um, string spacing. We just got to make it a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to put them face to face and line up the um, slots. get my pencil which I just sharpened last night and draw where I've got to cut it. Now oddly enough it's roughly the same height 
the slots however are deeper so I'm probably going to shave some of the um, bottom off of this and thickness wise I will not have to touch the thickness front to back so shave a little bottom shave a little off the sides I got my little uh, shaving kit here oh, you can't see it the shaving kit so let me do that and we'll be back Okay, we had a minor emergency. We, um, the um, sander kicked up and caught my thumb. Took off part of my thumb pad. Now all we're doing is making it smooth from all the work we did. Just a little 220 sandpaper because that's pretty rough grit especially whenever it's your finger or thumb just to take the really hard edges off and make sure that yeah it's flat all right that looks good we got to do a test fit and anything else I have to do as far as fine tuning will happen at the top of the nut. But I don't think that's going to need to be done. And this is this is fitting beautifully. Okay, everybody, we have our new GraphTech nut installed. After losing part of my thumb on the first nut. And uh, where all the strings are sitting at 0 0.020, our relief is at 0 0.12 at the 12th fret, and our string height is 5 64 at the low E and between 3 and 4 64 on the high E. And don't think I have any buzz. Next is intonation. see where everybody is. Flat, flat, G is bang on, B is on, and E is on. So the top three strings are flat. That's not a problem. tension off to make it easier to do and we're just going to move the saddles this way and take a uh, wild eyed guess and get it tuned in and we'll be back pick up height lottery I go down a little bit good that go down a little bit. Perfect. Uh, 
That's right on. And come up a little bit. Actually, I'm going to bring this up just a hair too. Barely feeling it, so I want to make sure there's contact between the two. This one still has to come up. There we go. Okay, so what did we do here? We changed the strings from not a set of standard nines that came on it to Ernie Ball heavy bottom 1052s. Anyhow, we leveled and crowned the frets, polished them. See how nice and polished they are? Yeah. Um, new Graph Tech Tusk Nut, and all the strings are set at uh, 20 thousandths across the fret. First fret, we have 12 thousandths. Let me just take a look since we're here to make sure that, that stayed there. Between the 7th and the 8th, and we... Perfect. Okay. And then we want 564 without the capo. 564 on the low E. And we are on the line of 464, so we're actually a little lower than 464 because the string has to sit on the line. Um, I tried to get it out of three, but uh, there was a little bit of choking on the G string in the high register here. Uh, set the intonation. Almost ran out of room and ha almost had to flip the saddle on the uh, D, but we got it there. And then we got the rest of the intonation set. Uh, pick up height. And the last thing we'll do is play it. Put the truss rod cover back on. All right, so we got the neck pickup. Fingernail underneath there to make that happen. So your uh, bridge pit or neck position. Bridge position. no grindy very polished and crowned frets so yeah for two hundred and sixty nine dollars 
you get a mahogany body, you get brass saddles, you get coil tapping, get really nice inlays. The only thing on this thing I would replace right now out of the box, I'd put strap locks on it and I'd put better tuners on it. Other than that, this thing is ready to go. And a three quarter inch maple, flame maple top. It's not a maple top with a veneer on the top. It's actually a three quarter inch flame maple top. It has a nice center line that runs right through between the third and fourth string. Yeah, for $269, that's a steal. So once again, I would like to thank you for joining us down here in the underground lair. If you're in the general Pittsburgh area and you'd like to have your axe sharpened, please contact me at stringmanguitars at gmail.com. Follow me on Facebook, String Man Guitars. Um, like the uh, Facebook page, follow us, send uh, questions, you can instant message me if you need work done. And then, of course, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and um, like the videos, ask questions there. Um, and we'll see where this thing goes to. So, peace, take care of your neighbors, and watch out for everybody. Be safe. Peace.